Hello. In this video, we're going to have a look at the European Aviation Safety Agency, otherwise known as EASA. Before we look at what EASA is, it helps to understand some of the background around why EASA exists. Globally, aviation is regulated by ICAO, an agency of the UN. ICAO requires that each nation, or state as they're known, complies with 96 articles and a series of standard and recommended practices. Article 72 of the ICAO Convention permits states to pool their resources together to form joint authorities. The idea of this is to allow states to save on cost by not having to duplicate all of the work required to meet ICAO's requirements. In 1970, several European nations formed a joint authority called the Joint Aviation Authority. The original aim of the JAA was to implement a common certification standard for large aircraft and aircraft parts. This was in order to allow the formation of Airbus. However, it later grew responsibility for safety standards and procedures. While EASA didn't technically replace the JAA, it did take over most of its functions, and the JAA was ultimately disbanded in 2009. So what actually is EASA? EASA is an agency of the European Union, so as with other EU agencies, it answers to the European Parliament and the Council of the European Union. It was formed in 2002 and has its headquarters in Cologne, Germany. While it is an EU agency, it actually also contains members from the European Free Trade Association, or EFTA as it's known. This means it includes nations such as Iceland, Liechtenstein, Norway and Switzerland. Depending on you, when you watch this, you may notice that Britain is soon to meet neither of these categories. Stay tuned for an upcoming video on that. So what does EAS actually do? EASA deals with most of the licensing in aviation, whether that be for aircrew, medical certificates, or airworthiness licenses for aircraft. Additionally, it implements regulations for ATC, commercial airports, and flight simulation training devices. EASA also has jurisdiction over which operators are permitted to operate in EASA-controlled airspace. EASA has a blacklist of 16 countries, which covers over 200 airlines which are not permitted to enter EASA airspace. Aviation authorities regularly negotiate regarding matters such as standardising safety procedures or blacklisting states. One of EASA's roles is to negotiate with other aviation authorities, such as the FAA in the United States, as a single body rather than each member state individually. This is quite similar in its approach to how the EU handles negotiations such as trade deals. EASA doesn't completely eliminate the need for national aviation authorities. What it does do is reduce some of their direct responsibilities. Some things NAAs are still responsible for include airport security measures, counter-terrorism, military, Customs and emergency services, including search and rescue, firefighting, and coast guard operations. There are some areas of aviation that EASA deliberately stays away from, including the regulation of ultralights, experimental aircraft, and balloons, as the regulation of these is far better handled on a state by state basis. One of the requirements of ICAO membership is that the states complete a compliance checklist to ensure that the standards and recommended practices are being implemented. EASA helps its member states uh, complete this process. Please remember that all EASA members are separate members of ICAO. EASA doesn't actually handle ICAO membership on behalf of its members. However, for matters delegated to EASA, EASA provides this information itself. One of the big projects underway uh, at the time of recording is the single European sky. Currently, airspace within Europe is defined by national borders. This means that if a commercial flight crosses five European nations, it will have to be handed off to five separate air traffic control systems. This both creates more work for pilots 
and a lot more work for air traffic controllers who have to manage the receiving and sending of aircraft between different ATC systems. This issue is acutely felt in Europe due to the small geographic size of the majority of the member states. The single European Sky project aims to replace the nation-based airspace boundaries with functional airspace blocks. These blocks are designed specifically with efficient management of air traffic in mind, rather than the borders of the underlying states themselves. In addition to this, the project aims to integrate civil and military air traffic management, which have traditionally been separate. As the name suggests, these measures are all intended to effectively introduce a single shared European sky, and with this unified management it should be possible to provide enhanced efficiency, especially within commercial aviation, with more direct routing and less holding resulting in reduced flight times and a reduced environmental impact. OK, so this was quite a big topic for a single relatively short video. Uh, if you have any feedback, corrections or questions, please just leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. If you have any suggestions for future videos, I would also love to hear these. Thank you for watching.